Let's take a look at some charts for the latest Litecoin article on Brave New Coin. I'm going to start with some of the least sexy or interesting topic for many coins, but it's the GitHub commits or developer activity over the past year. Now, Charlie Lee has addressed this many times. This isn't FUD that I'm presenting. This is facts. This is just the amount of activity over the past year has dwindled to nothing. He said, well, look, LTC just copies BTC's code, transfers it over, and away it goes. It just does its own thing. There's never really been any dedicated developers. There's one or two. There's Thrasher, and I think one other whose name escapes me. But coins need a few things. They need a community. They need cheerleaders on Twitter and social media. They need vibrant volatility and price. And they also really need some sort of dedicated development team which isn't exactly there currently for Litecoin, which is problematic. You know, I think Doge actually has more commits over the past year, Dogecoin, than LTC does. That being said, they did introduce two new protocol developments in December, Mimblewimble and Extension Blocks, both of which help enable private transactions or confidential transactions, that sort of thing. So it remains to be seen if that is in the market's interest or not. But as we stand here now, there's very little activity developer-wise on on Litecoin. Moving over to the hash rate, so Litecoin had its block reward having August 7th, and since then, hash rate really took a tumble. To me, this, over 70%, I think, to me, this speaks to the declining profitability of the miners. You know, if, if you have X amount of electricity cost and you're making less than that, per day, depending on scale, some people just say, okay, I'm not going to mine this anymore. I can't afford to. It just doesn't make sense. That's a possibility, especially because the hash rate decline mirrors the price decline almost one for one. So as soon as price pops up significantly, you can expect LTC hash rate to very likely increase with it. Now, taking a look at some charts, LTC, for the most part, has traded pretty technical over the past two years. It's had a series of uh, descending triangles, which are bearish continuation signs leading into bullish reversal signs, invert head and shoulders, um, shoulder, shoulder head, or Adam Eve. And it had its mini uptrend before having, before Bitcoin did in uh, Q2 2019. Then it had its having, and since then it's just been in this downward spiral, this downward price channel. Only recently, again, perking up, making some higher highs, getting out of this, this downward death spiral to the core, back above 50, which is a pretty significant psychological resistance. I like to look at the Bitfinex long short ratio, the 50 and the 200 EMA, yearly pivots, volume profile of the visible range, these horizontal bars and RSI, which is just an oscillator that tells you the strength or the momentum of what's going on in the market. So we look at the EMAs first, we can see that, you know, after that bullish period, we had a golden cross and then we had a death cross. And again, we're leading up to this golden cross sometime in 2020. Pretty likely it's going to happen so long as price can either maintain at the 200 EMA or go sideways for an extended period, you know, or come up to this yearly pivot around 70 and sort of chill out, reconsolidate, and then you'll get your golden cross. Right now, the RSI is definitely an overbought territory, so it'll more than likely just chill here. And especially looking at the long short ratio, shorts are at an all time low on Bitfinex for LTC USD, and shorts have continued to decline since June 2019. So until we see shorts perk back up and longs come down a little bit, this is a pretty crowded long trade just based on the open interest on Bitfinex. It says there's a lot of people that are long. The probability of more longs piling in here decreases. You know, I'd I'd rather see longs at all-time lows and shorts at all-time high as we're pushing highs. That's much more preferable if you're looking for a bullish rally. And as far as the VPVR is concerned, these horizontal bars, we're above the that 50 horizontal resistance, psychological resistance, um, just slightly below the yearly pivot at 70. So it'll probably just consolidate between 50 and 70, at least for a little while. RSI is going to cool off a little bit. 
There's also a, a bearish divergence here, depending on how you want to look at this. So you're getting a higher high in RSI here with a lower high in price. So that's called a hidden bearish divergence, suggesting a waning bullish momentum because despite stronger momentum than previous on this high, it's making a lower high in price. So that just says it's probably going to chill out here for a little bit. Looking at cloud makes it pretty clear. Again, one of the reasons why I just love cloud is my go-to indicator. If we're below cloud, we're bearish. If we're above cloud, we're bullish. You can see it's in this transition period. Will she, won't she go above the cloud? That's the question here. Again, that 50 to 70 zone. What I want to see is this sort of thing where the cloud flips green. We're above the cloud for a little bit. And then we, we sort of take off. You can see that happens even in the bearish case. It'll consolidate a little bit below the cloud. And then it'll make its move. Consolidate. Keep going. Consolidate. Keep going. Have some trend reversal stuff move back up through the cloud and then, you know, continue the bullish rally. So we had the same, same thing here over the past year, you know, it's just consolidated down, consolidated down, consolidate down, finally making a higher high on low time frames. So hopefully this will come back above the cloud. If you're bullish, cloud will flip, the metrics themselves will all flip bullish and then it'll begin its bullish ascent. Looking at the LTC BTC ratio, much like the Dogecoin BTC ratio, it's uh, pretty apparent on the weekly or higher time frames that, you know, it just ranges highs, lows, highs, lows, highs, lows. So just based on that, obviously it's at a historic low here. And just from that perspective, it's a decent risk reward trade. You know, you, you, you likely want to buy much less when it's at its local top historically around 0.025 than you do when it's at 0.006. And then if we look at all the other things we were looking at uh, for the USD pairs, Again, it's flipping on the cloud. We had the six months, six month accumulation range that painted continual bullish divergence. We're getting lower low in price, higher lows in RSI, barring this one here. Um, less significant now as we're pulling above the trend metrics, you know, similar to this period where pulling above the cloud, eventually pulling above the 200 and away she goes, or pulling below the cloud, pulling below the 200, and then down comes the spill. So that's what we're looking for here. I don't expect it to get anywhere near 025 this year. Usually it sort of lags like Bitcoin's all time high. So, you know, a decent target would be this 01 historical uh, pivot or psychological resistance zone.